What is going on at ChatGPT that they are making such rash, hasty and strange decisions? How will this affect the new ChatGPT 5.2 model? What changes will ChatGPT 5.2 bring? When will it be unwieldy? And how will Google Gemini AI affect this? This is Tomasz Czernowski from Tomasz AI Channel. Our marketing agency has generated over 50 million US dollars in revenue for clients over the past 11 years, and AI now helps us achieve even better results. My challenge for you is simple. Watch these videos for 120 days, take notes and test everything. By the end of 2025, you will use AI better than 99% of people and businesses. And that's my mission, guys. Let's go. So today's video is going to be slightly different than the usual ones. OpenAI rushes out new AI model after code red declared. So I know that you uh, you most likely uh, saw some of these code red uh, thumbnails and videos or, or articles uh, on the internet. And I know that uh, you might already have some information or you might be confused what it actually means, the code red thing. Uh, I will explain it to you on a simple example. Uh, once uh, the, the time when the ChatGPT 3.5 was introduced, it was uh, back in 2022. I think it was November or October. I don't know exactly, but somewhere like that. Uh, it basically surprised the whole market, and mainly, for example, Google. Uh, it was it was hugely surprised, like what it is, how how it's like how it's capable of doing things, you know, the GPT, we all, you know, uh, we all have been surprised, right? But uh, they basically, uh, there was code red alarm uh, inside of ChatGPT, uh, sorry, inside of Google. And what it, uh, what it did was that basically we need to change things uh, fast and we, to move, we need to move things fast and we need to, you know, do something basically just don't stay and watch do something do something radical create something be faster more efficient hire more people uh you know better project management better product uh, development everything and basically i think that it happened and it went pretty well, right? Because right now, Google is basically one of the few companies that's basically like on the, uh, you know, on the roof of this AI, AI thing, uh, AI evolution, revolution, because, you know, they have all these tools, they've been able to, you know, gem uh, create Gemini and make it awesome, uh, make it even better than ChatGPT, than other tools, you know, evolve all these other tools, Nano Banana, VO 3.1, integration in its Google workspace, etc., etc. All of these things, they've been uh, able to basically do it in the last three years. So they totally, you know, crashed all the old, you know, uh, teams, etc., etc., and they basically created something new and uh, very good. But... This time, the code red is inside of ChatGPT because what happened is that once Gemini 3 Pro and Nano Banana Pro on 18th of November and on 20th of November was introdu were introduced, basically from that, uh, from that moment, uh, in a seven days in the future, there was a 6% decline in usage uh, and visits of ChatGPT. You know, 6% doesn't, you know, sound like a huge number, right? But if you compare these numbers, 203 million peak seven-day average visits uh, and 191 million end of seven-day average visits, November 28th. So it's around 12 million of daily visits, which is, yeah, a huge number to me. And maybe, maybe this is something that I don't know, but maybe this is something that shows us that maybe OpenAI or ChatGPT isn't the company that uh, isn't something that can basically battle with G uh, Google and Gemini and Nano Banana and 
you know, all these things that Google has. And definitely Google has tons of advantages, right? They have all the search game on, you know, the organic search, paid search, they have YouTube on board, they have Gmail, Google Space, Google, Google One, they have uh, all the G Google images, they have the database of behaviors, they have hardware, you know, they have the phones, smartphones, etc. They have... Uh, uh, they have the Google Pay, they have Google Play, apps, Android, Google Chrome, Chromium. They have a lot of stuff, lots of stuff. Like, they are like completely different company than OpenAI and ChatGPT. So, in that case, I think that's what they are trying to do uh, these days in OpenAI and ChatGPT is that they are trying to be as fast as possible because... That's their only advantage that they can have in the comparison and in bed, in a battle with, uh, for example, Google or other huge tech companies. They have the inf that they have the infrastructure. For example, XAI also has the X, right, uh, where they have uh, the user base and the data from it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all of these companies they have something, some assets that they can use for, uh, you know, uh, win this AI game, etc., etc. But OpenAI, what do they have? Really, what do they have? They tried the browser, they tried all these integrations uh, in the GPT, all the shopping things. Now they are working on the ads, uh, ads platform. They have the Sora 2, which is the video social AI platform. What else? Well, there's not many things that they actually have, right? And before we dive into uh, more detail, definitely, guys, I would like you to invite you to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and also click on the bell icon because I'm literally building and creating one of the biggest AI channels out there on the internet. And I would be uh, really stunned and pleased if you can support me on this journey and if you can be part of this journey too. Thank you very much. I highly appreciate it. And this video is slightly different. I know it's not about some particular tool and how it works, what it does, etc., etc. But, uh, you know, I would like to have some of these videos like I'm recording today uh, with you guys because it's more or more so or more like a conversation to me. And I am, you know, I, I am really blessed and stunned and glad that, uh, you know, uh, this thing like AI actually happened and that we can have this conversation around it and what it does and what companies are, uh, you know, what they do and uh, how they are behaving and what's the advantage, disadvantage, what's the mission, vision, if do, are they doing that correctly or not and what what's in it basically in those details and what it can do and what it can what, what it can cannot do basically, etc. etc. So all these things regarding all these AI tools and all these AI LLM platforms, I'm really you know fascinated by it and. I really like these conversations and I would be pleased if you if we can have at least some of some sort of this conversation that I can you know have some thoughts around some some things and some tools updates whatever and you can basically go slightly deeper in the comment section and have some sort of conversation and maybe in the future it might happen in a different way. Maybe there will be some other opportunity how we can be able how we will be able to. Uh, uh, you know, make it happen to have some real conversation, maybe through the internet, maybe through some community. I don't know, maybe. Uh, and zero promises here, but, you know, maybe maybe something will happen in the future uh, from my standpoint. So I really appreciate it one more time. Thank you guys and gals. Thank you very much. Uh, and back to the video. So that's, that's the actual position where the GPT and OpenAI is. And I don't think it's a it's a good position for them, you know. I think that, you know, it's not the best position for them, actually. Uh, I'm really uh, shocked by what they are trying to do and how, you know, unstable, at least from the outside, the business seems to me. And for example, The Verge didn't associate Garlic with GPT 5.2, but said that OpenAI wanted to release the GPT 5.2 upgrade later in December, later in December. But pressure from competitors reportedly convinced OpenAI to bring the release forward to this week, which is this week, actually. If GPT 5.2 is a first response to Gemini 3, 
as the blog claims, it may not necessarily be the bigger garlic update that the, that the information, which is the uh, server, the portal uh, mentioned. It's unclear that uh, new features GPT, uh, what new features GPT 5.2 will offer, with the watch detailing performance improvements that should help OpenAI catch up to Google. OpenAI is focusing on speed, reliability, and customizability instead of flashy new features. So I think that they are trying, you know, to deliver performance similar to Gemini 3.0. Uh, I don't think that they will be, you know, announcing something like flashy, like the browser thing or the Sora 2 thing, or maybe some of the shopping experiences or the learning through the ChatGPT and OpenAI, etc., etc. Um, I think that th this is going to be like, hey, this is the new update. We can, you know, there are better results in terms of, you know, you know, text generation, maybe even photo and images generation. I don't know. And that's it, basically. So in my head, my thoughts are, wow, is this the moment that ChatGPT is starting losing its ground? You know, that they are starting losing um, the users because... In my point of view, if I'm the user and I'm paying, I don't know, 20 bucks for ChatGPT or Google Gemini, and in the Google integration, I have all the, you know, Google Drive, I have the Gmails, I have all these things, I have the documents, Excel spreadsheets, deck, notebook LM, YouTube, all these things I have integrated in the in the Google ecosystem with the Gemini, etc. And Gemini is connected through is connected through all these uh, tools. Why should I use GPT? That's the question that I was asking myself yesterday and tomorrow, uh, today during the day. Like, what is the reason that people, users, should be using actually ChatGPT and paying for it, than, for example, Gemini? Like what's the what's the, what's the use case? Like why why should you do it? Why should you pay another tool or other tool that's not integrated directly uh, in all these other apps and ecosystem that you are actually already using? Well, that's a tough question. And if you have the answer, definitely shoot it in the comment section, and I would be glad to respond to you and you know have some conversation in there. So thank you very much for it, and go do it. Uh, but I don't see, I don't see any, like from the information that I have right now at this moment, I don't see any huge advantage except the speed. I think the only one thing that they can have is the speed because all the other things, you know, the money, the resources, the data, the, the talent, all these things, I think the advantage is on the side of Google right? So what's left? And I believe that what's left is the speed. And that's exactly what they are trying to do here. I don't know if it's right. I don't know, because obviously if you if you deliver something to the market and it's not as, uh, as the thing that you hyped before, or it's not quality as the competitor's tool, LLM AI, that's bad, right? That's not a good. Uh, that's an. That's not a good. Uh, let's say, brand building tool, right? It's it's bad. You, you're gonna lose. It's not. It's not great for your brand image and positioning and all these things, you know. So I don't know, guys. It's a tough conversation and the videos like this. I would like to create and record more because it's more so like a thinking through it. It's like a brainstorming, and I really like those uh, and. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically all I have to say uh, today. It's not like that I know something special that nobody else on this planet uh, uh, know. That's not the point. Th the point is that I think that uh, better things can be discovered in conversation, and that's what I'm trying to have here <laughs> through through the YouTube. Uh, and the conversation should be in the comment section, for example, uh, maybe in the future in a different place. But for for now. In the, co in the comment section. And the thing is that I'm basically thinking, like, what's the next step? Like, what should they do? Like, is it possible that ChatGPT and OpenAI might not be there in one year, two years? Maybe in a five-year window, there's going to be no company 
called OpenAI or ChatGPT? Is it possible or not? Or is it at this stage, is it so big that it's, you know, not in the cards? Basically, they're they're gonna be here and they're gonna deliver and they will gonna grow as as Sam Altman basically uh posted uh, this memorandum image. Where is it? Where is it? Where's the image? It was the graph that, you know, they're gonna grow like crazy. Yeah, there we go. You know, it's the trend in uh, five, six years in the future. And you, you are saying basically that the, the, the black number is the cost estimated and the green is the estimated revenue. And as you can see, the revenue is basically climbing up, climbing up, and it's basically catching up the estimated cost. But uh, not even in 2030, they should be uh, break even. So I don't know, guys, what's the future, what the future holds, but... You know the AI is gonna be here. It's gonna be. It's the future. That's that's for sure. Is there a bubble? Yes, for sure. In everything today, there is a bubble. Uh, you know that's that's how it is basically. But is there a fundament that it's actually creating something and the value is there for sure, hundred percent. The value is there. Automations, uh, AI assistants, AI agents, creation of text, uh, uh, creation of images, videos, voice, sound everything is there, conversations, you know, all these things are there. So for sure, th- there are some fundament, there are some fundament there, but yeah, is it enough in terms of Google? Is it uh, in terms of ChatGPT? sorry, uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, in ChatGPT and OpenAI, is it good enough to b- be here in the, you know, in, in the battle from, uh, with these companies like a meta, uh, Google, etc., XAI, etc., etc. I don't know, guys. I don't know, guys. But this is something that you know they need to tackle on, and they need to deliver. Uh, they need to deliver this week, and also in the upcoming months and years, because there's no way that you can have uh, this big company uh, or even bigger company in this day and age if there is a, a huge competition uh, like Google, Meta, uh, maybe in the future even Apple, Microsoft, and other huge, com- Amazon, uh, and other great companies. So I don't know, guys. The, that's it for today's video. I, I'm really glad that you watched till this moment. Please leave a comment. What's your opinion on it? If you have one, uh, and let's have some conversation there. I'm really glad uh, that we can have this type of conversations. Uh, it's I'm super pumped to it. And also, don't forget to like this video out because I, I am recording and uploading 80 plus days in a row and I will be doing that till the end of 2025. So definitely don't forget to like this video out, support this channel. Also, click on the bell icon with the subscribe button because unless you do it, uh, YouTube won't know uh, that you actually like these videos and you want to see more from this channel, etc., etc. So you definitely need to give them signals and the signals should be in the form of subscribe, also a uh, bell icon and also uh, clicking on the like button and maybe even the comment section. Also, don't forget to watch this video uh, and check this video out. It, it's a really good one. Uh, it's an overview of top uh, AI news and rumors uh, uh, in the last six, seven days. So definitely go there. And obviously there will be a ChatGPT2 thing, but many more, uh, many more other news. So definitely go there. And I will see you guys tomorrow with the next one. Cheers.